All right, let's talk about the bugs and the bees for a little bit. Starting with the bees, take a look at this beekeeper in China who decided to set a new world record for being covered with bees. He sat for almost an hour with no protection for his eyes, nose, or mouth while helpers poured more and more bees on him. He says after keeping bees for 19 years, he's grown immune to their venom. Well, <laughs> bee venom isn't all bad, though. As a matter of fact, a multiple sclerosis patient has uh, had bee venom treatments, and they say he's, they've helped him ease the pain of his MS. Did he get you? Ooh, yeah, he got me. Yeah, his bee venom therapy requires him to be stung about 100 times a week. Now, there are no studies yet that determine whether or not bee venom actually works for the pain of MS. Well, there is, however, new research that there may be anti-cancer properties to bee venom. A university professor says bee venom toxins have been safely used to target malignant cells while sparing normal cells. So, let's talk bugs. This is the triatomine, or, or the kissing bug. The bite from this bug could be catastrophic with all kinds of complications that could possibly include death. Now, while not probable, it is possible to get Chagas disease from any one of nine different breeds of kissing bugs. That are, see those states colored in orange? The, generally, the lower half of the United States is where they are. That's why it's important that you not get the wrong idea from the name of the kissing bug. It's a romantic name. Kissing bug is a romantic name, but their bite, their kiss is, can be lethal. The size of a penny, it crawls into your home and into your bed. This is one bug you don't want to kiss you. They only feed at night, usually while we're sleeping. It crawls on top of sheets and commonly bites around the mouth while a person is sleeping, hence the name. And this pest is a vector. It does transmit diseases to humans. Uh, it is very important that people know about it. Diseases like Chagas that comes from parasites and can cause cardiac arrest, paralysis, and intestinal problems. But for a kissing bug, we'll have to use a heavier chemical on the outside. We want to keep the, the bug on the outside of the home. You need to make sure that your house is sealed properly. It's not all about putting the chemical down. It's also about making sure your house is safe. The bug is common in Mexico and South America, but moving into the United States. Pest control specialists say they're already getting calls for the bugs. Also, now, just to be perfectly clear on this, the infection does not come from the bite. Nope. According to the CDC, the parasite that causes the disease is in the bug feces. The bug generally defecates on a sleeping person while it's feeding on his or her blood. Transmission occurs when the fecal material gets rubbed into the bite wound or into your eye or your mouth and the parasites enter the body. It is, however, very important that you know there's only a small chance that actually you will contract Chagas from a bug, even if the bug is infected. I still don't want that bug on me. <laughs> I know, did you hear the reaction from some oh. of the audience members? Mm -hmm. Pretty grossed out. <laughs> it's nasty. Now, uh, they may be bugs that you don't want around, okay. But that doesn't mean that all bugs are bad. They're called pollinators, and they play a vital role in pollination of many crops grown here on Delmarva. Delmarva Life Sean Stryker has more on a sanctuary specifically designed for these helpful insects. Tall grass can be an eyesore and flying insects can be annoying, so it's no surprise a lot of people don't want either around. Over the past few years and in decades really, pollinating insects, insects that feed primarily on nectar have been in decline, and it's because of a lack of areas like this. It's a lack of habitat. But Nate Carl, a wildlife biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, knows the importance of these insects. So it's been in the works this is for three years. This is the third summer. So with the help of a few colleagues, he created a habitat specifically for them. Right now we're at the start of the wildlife drive, which is open to the public at Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge. And this is what we call a pollinator sanctuary. It's a five acre plot of land that was established specifically for pollinating insects, butterflies, bees, that sort of thing. So it's habitat, wildflowers created for those types of animals. But what exactly is a pollinator? Pollinators or insects that feed on nectar are important for several reasons. Primarily, uh, fruits and vegetables for human, humans and humanity 
they're responsible for pollinating the fruits and vegetables. Insects don't know they're pollinating. They go in for the nectar, the sweet fluid that's inside the flower. They want to eat that. I mean, that's how they sustain themselves. But what they're doing is picking up pollen from one plant on their legs, on their mouth parts, on their antenna, and bringing it to other plants. And when they, they distribute that when they go in to eat nectar off another plant, and they put the pollen inside the flower, which essentially creates the process of forming seed. Seeds for plants like corn and soybeans, both of which are grown here on Delmarva. They're hugely beneficial. I mean, without pollinators, crops that we were just talking about wouldn't get pollinated. You would have to have an artificial means of pollinating them, whether you're doing that by hand or by brush. You have to take pollen and put it to different flowers. I mean, that's how, um, that's how these crops grow. The pollinator sanctuary was strategically designed with 25 different wildflowers that bloom at different times between early spring and the fall, drawing in all sorts of pollinating insects throughout the summer. Dragonflies, I mean, just various, uh, you know, bumblebees, honey producing bees, that sort of thing. So, I mean, it varies. It's, they're very diverse, but I mean, I think the more charismatic species of pollinating insects are things like monarch butterflies, that, you know, everybody knows what a monarch butterfly is. And the pollinator sanctuary is open for you to walk around and observe these insects, as well as all of the wild flowers. This paved area, this road here, is open to the public. It's open to the public anytime the, the wildlife refuge itself is open, and that's from, um, from dawn until dusk. So people can come out here, they can walk this paved trail, um, they can spend as much time as they want, bring binoculars, observe butterflies, plants, um, wildflowers, and that sort of thing. Now keep in mind it's not just insects that can pollinate plants according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Hummingbirds are also pollinators. They transfer pollen from flower to flower while eating. Doves can also be pollinators. They like to nest in the tall grass and eat the seeds of certain plants. Both of these birds can be found at the Blackwater Wildlife Refuge Pollinator Sanctuary. Beautiful place just to wander yeah. around. Okay, so you want to keep pollinators around, but I'll bet you I can name three things that you don't want to see. Ready for this? Poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac. If you have ever been around any of these plants and developed a rash, you know just how miserable it can be. I do. Up next on Del Marva Life, our friends from Angie's List help us identify and remove these poisonous plants. And we're calling on gardening expert Jenny Rosencrantz to help us care for our crepe myrtles. Find out what steps need to be taken and avoided to keep these bushes beautiful. And while we're at home, did you ever think you could find beauty products in your kitchen? From whiter teeth to odor-free feet, find out what foods may do the trick. But first, you know Del Marva Life is all about community, and that includes your community as well. Is there something going on in your neighborhood? We'd love to hear about it and see the photos from your event. Send the information our way, along with any pictures you'd like to share. You can reach us at comments at delmarvalife.com or like us on Facebook and share the information there. Del Marva Life, we'll be right back.